Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials with Teaching Vlog 102, Objectives. This is an orientation to objectives and in this video I'm going to tell you what are the difference between teaching slash learning objectives and all other kinds of goals and objectives. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to write effective objectives. This is important, so pay attention. As we start off, we need to all understand what are the difference between teaching or learning objectives and all other sorts of objectives and goals. Now, I've done a previous video on setting SMART goals. And if you want to watch that video, you probably should do that. And it's right now. You follow that link in the upper right hand corner and it will take you to that video, which you can go watch right now and then come back. And this video will pick up right where you left off. But SMART basically means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. Now all goals and objectives should share these common characteristics. And I'm going to tell you now what is the difference between a teaching or learning objective and any other objective. Now a teaching or learning objective, it has all of the characteristics of other goals and objectives, but it also has two additional characteristics that set it apart from those. And that's what we're going to go into in today's video. The first characteristic that sets a teaching or learning objective apart from other goals and objectives is that it must be student or learner oriented. This is very important. And the reason for that is because if I set a teaching or learning objective for me to teach you something, this, that, or the other thing, I could teach it to you in Inuit or Swahili and I would obtain my objective of teaching it, but you wouldn't get anything out of it unless you spoke those languages. So we don't want to set the goal for us to teach something. We want to set the goal for the students to learn something. The way to do this is to write your objectives in such a way that it forces you to be student oriented. Now this implies, and I'm very serious about this, you need to write down your learning objectives. If you start to try to teach something and you have not specifically sat down and written out or specified typed into your computer, your objectives, what it is you're trying to accomplish, then you're missing a big bet. And why do you do this? Why do you even set teaching or learning objectives? Well, that's simple. Before you set out to do anything, whether it's teaching, whether it's going to the store, whether it's going on a trip, you need to know what it is you want to accomplish before you start the work. If you don't do this, then how are you going to know if you finished it? One of my favorite anecdotes is when I was teaching at the Air Force's academic instructor school, and that's in the previous video. I would frequently come into class on the day when I was beginning to teach objectives, and I would come in, I'd be looking around distractedly and kind of patting my pockets and say, uh, I, I need somebody to run me an errand. Can somebody in the class here run me a quick errand? Inevitably, somebody would raise their hand and say, oh yeah, I'll do that for you. And I'd look at them and I'd give them a big grin and say, oh, okay, go ahead. And I'd point at the door. And of course, there would be several seconds of silence. And after that, the, the class would start to laugh and they'd know, oh yeah, you're just joking. Well, you're making a point here. And of course, inevitably, there would be some joker that would jump up and head for the door. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what we want to do. But the objective of that specific lesson was that you have to know what it is you're going to accomplish before you start out trying to accomplish it. And that's exactly what we're doing when we write down our teaching slash learning objectives. And the first thing we need to do is to make it student or learner oriented. Now here's how to do that. When you write down your objectives, now I'm going to give you this template and you need to use it whenever you set down your objectives until you find something that works even better. And the template is this. It stated, the objective of this lesson is for each student to, and then you put down the behavior. Now you notice how that's phrased. The objective of this lesson is for each student, or you can say each learner if you prefer, to do something. And you put that something later, and we're going to cover that next. But if you phrase your objectives this way, then you are forcing yourself to be learner oriented or student oriented. And this is absolutely essential to making an effective learning objective. 
Now, the other characteristic that sets learning objectives apart from other general goals and objectives is that it must be set to a specific level of learning. Now, on a previous video, and there's a link to it right there in the upper right hand corner, if you want to go watch that right now, you can watch it and come back. Actually, it's a prerequisite to watching this video. So if you haven't watched it, I'd advise you go watch it right now. I talk about the various domains of learning, the cognitive domain, the psychomotor domain, and the affective domain. And I talk about the levels of learning, mostly in the cognitive domain, because in most teaching situations, you're going to be teaching in the cognitive domain, basically the brain learning domain. In the cognitive domain, there are various levels of learning, and we have covered those in that previous video, and I'm going to cover them in much more depth in a future video. We talk about the first three levels, the knowledge level, the comprehension level, and the application level as being the only levels you can practically expect. And remember in SMART, A is attainable, and you need your goals to be attainable. You need your objectives to be attainable. The only practically attainable levels in the cognitive domain are knowledge, comprehension, and application. And application usually takes a longer course to get there. When we say that an objective must be phrased to a specific level of learning, we are talking about the knowledge level, the comprehension level, or the application level, and sometimes the sublevels within those levels. Now, we can't look inside a student's head and see whether they are at that level of learning. We can't look inside your head and see if you understand this or whether you can use this in a new situation. So how do we tell? Well, this brings us to the M part of SMART, meaning measurable. We need to be able to measure whether a student has attained the level of learning we want for them. And the way we do this is through their behaviors. Now, there are certain behaviors that students can exhibit if they have attained that certain level of learning. For example, if my objective is for each student to obtain the knowledge level of the Inuit language, then I might write an objective down the line. There are several levels of objectives, and I will cover these in a future teaching video. You will need to watch that. But if I wanted to write a criterion objective, it says the objective of this lesson is for each student to attain the knowledge level of the Inuit language. The criterion objective might be given an example of a language that is not English and four possible identifications of that language, select the correct language that is given. That would show that they could recognize whether it is an Inuit language or not, and it would show that they have attained the knowledge level, or one example of the knowledge level. Another example of a knowledge level behavior would be define. They need to be able to define it, which basically you have memorized the definition of something, but that helps you attain a higher knowledge level. And the criterion objective for that might be given an example of a steel tumbler and four possible definitions of a steel tumbler, select the correct definition. That would be a good multiple choice question that would exemplify whether or not they had attained the knowledge level on the steel tumbler concept. Now, there are certain elements that we're going to get into in another future video on about how to build effective test questions that talk about plausible distractors. And if you said, given four possible definitions of it, and you say definition one is it's a fruit with an orange peel, definition two, it's a steel tumbler that is double walled and vacuum insulated, and definition three is it's something you can ride to school, and definition number four is it's something that you can take into the swimming pool. Those are not plausible distractors. And so in order to very much distinguish between somebody who has attained the knowledge level and somebody who hasn't, you must have plausible distractors. So that's for a future lesson, but that gives you an example of what I mean by phrasing an objective to a specific level of learning. Now, just to recap, a teaching or learning objective is a objective or goal that has all of the smart characteristics of other goals and objectives, but it also has a characteristic of being student or learner oriented, 
which you can do by applying that template that I just furnished you. And it also must be phrased to a specific level of learning. And that level of learning must be within the domain where you're teaching, which is going to usually be the cognitive domain, which would usually mean knowledge level, comprehension level, or application level. If you do that, then you will be able to write very effective learning objectives for anything that you want to teach. And that's all I've got for this video. I wanted to keep it realistic, which is one of the characteristics of a smart goal or objective. And we need to keep it realistic. And if I put any more into this video, I don't think it would be realistic for everybody watching this to absorb in one sitting. So we're going to stop it at that. And we're going to have future videos on this. Please give us a thumbs up. That will really help me know that you're getting a lot out of this video. It will help the YouTube robots know that they should recommend this video to other people wanting to learn about how to teach. And leave us a comment in the comment section below about how you think you can apply writing effective objectives in your life, in your teaching situations. And it doesn't matter whether you're really a teacher or you're just a parent or you're a Sunday school teacher or you're a scoutmaster or anybody else that works with in teaching situations. Even bosses do this and leave us a comment that tells us about that. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now, click the subscribe button and then the bell icon so YouTube will let you know by email when we post another video right here on David's Tutorials and Vlog Channel. And in the meantime, have an absolutely wonderful day, everybody. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.